Okay, <laughs> now that we're ready to go over our homework, we start. I, I didn't make my homework. No. That is so Short okay. waves of electromagnetic energy are absorbed by the Earth's surface during the day. They are lit later re radiated. That's that word we talked about yesterday into space as. So after the Earth has soaked them in, what do they re radiate as? Visible light, infrared, x-rays, or ultraviolet. What'd we say? <laughs> Sorry. But what wavelengths? Which waves get re-radiated out into space? When those sunbeams are trying to leave, which one of these are they? No, guys, I really want to know what you answer. Oh, two. Two? Two. two? Good. Two is the right one. And what is... What would you say infrared are like? That's the heat waves. Make sure you know that infrared is the heat. So when it's re-radiating out into space, it's heat waves. All right. What is the most likely reason for a decrease in air temperature observed between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. in New York State? Um, can I just point out, guys, um, from 12 midnight to 6 a.m., what's it like in New York State? Dark. It's dark. Really? Okay, I just wanted to point that out. It's dark. So why is it getting colder then? What were we thinking? You think cloud cover was increasing? So what do the clouds do when that when those sunbeams are trying to leave? What do the clouds do? They what? They cover them up. The clouds act like a blanket. The cloud no. Clouds act like a blanket making it so those sunbeams can't escape. So those ones that were trying to leave from the video we watched, when they're trying to leave as heat, the clouds act like a blanket. So it's not that one. Which one will cause the temperature to decrease from midnight to 6 a.m.? Um. Um, one really? Did we talk about air pressure so far? No, none of the other ones make sense. None of the other ones make sense though. Two, the Earth was radiating. So we we just talked about it here. So this picture right here. During the day, short waves come in. At night, the heat waves try to leave. What's gonna let it get colder is if those heat waves are actually allowed to get out. No, radiating. If you're radiating heat, what are you doing? Giving you're giving off heat. So that means the Earth is heating up, not No, it's heating up during the day. Cooling and then not at, not at night, yeah. So during the day, they, the, it's also cooling off at night, but they kind of, or during the day, but they balance each other out. What's coming in and going out, balance out. But at night, when it's dark, the energy is just leaving. That um, well, welcome to the New York State Regents exam. I do want to talk about the cloud cover one. If it was during the day, what would clouds do? Cool down. Yeah, why would it cool down during the day? Because the, the sun can't get down. So I'm guessing that is probably the main reason you guys answered that one, but it's also the reason I pointed out that it's dark from midnight to 6 a.m. I didn't answer Oh, we just skipped that one because we were afraid of it? No, I got it right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Which region of the electromagnetic spectrum is most of the outgoing radiation from Earth? That's that same radiation we were talking about. This one, the one that's trying to leave Earth. Which one is leaving Earth? I want to see from everyone what you said for number three, even if you want to reevaluate your answers. So it is the infrared, which is the heat waves that the Earth gives off. Visible light is the ones coming in. So visible's coming in, heat's going out. Uh, which one of these guys is a greenhouse gas? Carbon dioxide. Yeah, guys, you just have to memorize carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor are the greenhouse gases. Oh, so speaking of which one of these are the greenhouse one. gases, <laughs> answer one, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. An increase in which gas would cause the most greenhouse uh, most greenhouse warming of Earth's atmosphere? Again, carbon dioxide. 
Now this next question, a gradual increase in the atmospheric carbon dioxide would warm Earth's atmosphere because carbon dioxide, now let's look at all four answers. Poor reflector of ultraviolet light radiation. Poor absor absorber of infrared radiation. Good reflector of ultraviolet, good absorber of infrared. Questions are at least very, or the answers are very similar. First of all, does carbon dioxide deal with ultraviolet or infrared? Which one is carbon dioxide keeping in the atmosphere? It, it keeps infrared, the heat wave. Anytime you see infrared, I just want you to think heat. So, so is carbon dioxide a good absorber of heat or a good reflector of the heat? No, it actually absorbs it. That's why it gets warmer. The heat gets stuck where oh, with the yeah. carbon dioxide and warms up. Yeah. Energy transfer responsible for heat energy being lost from Earth into space. When again, when that heat is trying to leave space. Is it doing it through conduction, solidification, convection, or radiation? Hey, by the way, can we get rid of one without much thinking? Yeah. Which one? Two. Two. Solidification, what does that mean? Hardening. Yeah, it's hardening. It's becoming a solid. So that has nothing to do with energy transfer. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that. So is it conduction, convection, or radiation that the heat is leaving Earth from? Yeah, because remember we called it, we said it was re-radiating heat. And then finally, contact, uh, is that the one we're on? Nope. Earth's atmosphere is warmed when, ooh, again, which one of these will warm Earth? Infrared. infrared. Anytime you see infrared, I want you crossing that off in your head and putting heat. Infrared is heat. All right, this page. This one required some reading. And I know a lot of you skip reading, but if you skipped reading, you would have no idea what's going on in this experiment. The cross section to the right shows two compartments of water of equal volume, insulated by styrofoam, dividing wall, uh, separated by a metal dividing wall formed a closed energy system. When the temperature from the water in compartment A decreased, so A is going to get colder. Even though A is already 50, the experiment says that temperature decreased by 10. What's going to happen to the water in B, which starts off at 5 degrees Celsius? So if this one, which was 50, gets colder, what's going to happen to this one, which was 5 degrees? What will happen over here? Let's look at the answers. Will it stay the same? No. no. Will it decrease by five, decrease by 10, or increase by 10? Will this side get warmer or colder? Let's start there. It's already, it started at five. This one was 50. Keep in mind, five degrees, what's the what, freezing point of water at Celsius? Zero, so we're just really close to that. So we're practically freezing. And do you know what the boiling point of water is? A hundred, and this side's halfway to boiling. This is pretty darn hot water, sitting next to pretty cold water, separated by a metal wall. This side will get warmer. The warmth from here will go over here. That's going to get warmer. Yes, they have a number there, but that's not even the important part. The key is that it gets warmer because it doesn't get colder. Which one is a heat transfer due to differences in density? Convection. Convection. Warm, less dense materials rise. Cold, more dense materials sink. And what's the primary method of heat transfer through solid rock during contact? Metamorphism. Oh, when you touch things, you have conduction. Oh, and finally, on this page, the arrows in the right in the asthenosphere, that's this little layer right here. There's arrows there. B, 
The arrows shown in the asthenosphere represent the inferred slow circulation of the plastic mantle by a process of those arrows that are in a circular pattern. They are in the mantle. We learned this a couple chapters ago. In addition to this chapter, convection. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Guys, um, actually, I think there's another picture here that. Yep, I'll explain what I was going to explain here. Um, so this one again, I'm curious, did anybody skip this reading? Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we thought it was directions, right? I don't recommend skipping that. At least read it so you know what the heck you're doing. You very well could have. Oh, that's right. You guys didn't even do it. You very well could have been able to answer them without reading it, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Video. Questions one through three on the cross section below and your knowledge of earth science. The cross section shows the general air movement or the general movement of air within a portion of the earth's atmosphere located between 30 north and 30 south degrees latitude. Numbers one and two represent different locations in the atmosphere. All right. So it just told us this is how the air moves around in the atmosphere between 30 north and 30 south. Which temperature zone? Which temperature zone layer of Earth's atmosphere is shown in the cross section? What are they? What page in our reference table will help us with this? Uh, 14. 14. 14. This guy right here. Do we want to know which one? Troposphere? What are we got? We've got troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, or thermosphere. Which one is this picture representing? How can I do that based on the picture? What information does the picture give us to help? Um, so is latitude no, on here at all? Numbers. Here we go. So latitude's not on that reference table at all. The kilometers are. Now, guys, keep in mind, it's kilometers. 10 kilometers is very different than 10 miles. The so, yep, it's the bottom tropo. layer. Tropo or tropo. I've heard it pronounced tropo. both ways. Tropo. I go with tropo. Lots of people go tropo. I just call it tropo. Okay, just make sure it ends in sphere, not pause. Okay. What? Air movement shown in the cross section is due to the process of this whole circle situation. The air going up and then back down and then up and back down. What is that again? Not condensation. Conduction. Not conduction. That's touching. Convection. Convection. Warm stuff rises. Cold stuff sinks. I'll just knock you out there, Sarah. I mean, if we do all four of them, we'll get the answer, right? <laughs> and guys, I want to give you a hint. The circle stuff is not, anytime you see it, just think convection. And I also want to point out something. Where is the highest temperature? Would the highest temperature be at 30 north, zero, or 30 south? Zero. Why zero? Because it's the equator, and it's the hottest spot. Do you notice? So if this is the hottest spot. I'm going to pretend it's hot like fire right there. Where are the arrows going up? Compared to these locations, which locations are the arrows going up? Um, I, know. I mean, right here at the equator. See how this is where we have up arrows right up. here? Why are the arrows going up above the equator and going down at 30 north and 30 south? That's the temperature. It's because it's where it's the hottest. Yeah. So right here is where the heat is rising, right at the hottest point. So what if I had um, a campfire? And my campfire is going to be pretty crummy. Here's my campfire. The air above the campfire will be going up above the fire is where it'll be going up. Where will it be coming down? Just stays up there forever. Nothing ever sinks. Yeah. More like cold air sinks. Where are the down arrows going to, to be the in right this? Or left. Oh, and to the right, actually, for that matter. So here and here. The point is, will the campfire, will the air ever be sinking directly over the campfire? Yeah. 
Like this? Why not? Because that convection says warm air. This is going to be the hottest air right directly over the fire. So that's where the air is rising, at the warm spot. All right. How did you do question three? Oh, I didn't. First page of the reference table. It is seriously the easiest reference table we have, but it's the one everybody forgets about. Volume of oxygen present in the atmosphere at location two, so down near the ground, but still in the atmosphere, that's the troposphere. The amount of oxygen there, 21%. Uh, number four, we got a greenhouse going on over here. We have sunlight shining down on it. What is the primary function of the clear glass? Does the clear glass reduce the amount of insulation entering the greenhouse? No, in fact, it, it lets all of it in. That's why they use clear glass. Does the glass allow all wavelengths of radiation to enter and all wavelengths of radiation to escape? That's the answer too. Does everything come in and everything escapes? Nope. Uh, the glass, now answers three and four are very similar, but switched. Three says the glass allows short waves of radiation to enter, but reduces the amount of long wave radiation that escapes. Or four says a glass allows long waves of radiation to enter, but reduces the amount of short waves. I'm going to put up the electromagnetic spectrum to help. This guy right here. Does it let, does the glass let in short or long? And which one does it allow out short oh. or long? Which one allows out? Short. Or which one does it allow, I'm sorry, let me rephrase this. Which one does it not allow out? Long. The long, yeah, that was my fault. The longer here is the infrared. So it allows the short wave in, but reduces the amount of long wave radiation that can escape. And I got a question about question five here. Um, who the heck knew anything about Messina and Binghamton? Did you even know they were cities? Yeah. Okay. So guys, I personally, if I didn't teach this class, would have probably no idea where those places were. So we look on our, the point of my story is yes, you look on your reference table. They will never ask you about cities off the top of your head. Because most of us don't know where most cities are, but they will use the ones that are on here. So they used Binghamton and Messina. And the question says, why is Messina? What's one reason Messina is colder than Binghamton? Without even looking at the answers, what would your gut tell you about Messina versus Binghamton? Farther away from the yeah, Messina's farther away from the equator. Hey, we're getting closer to the North Pole. Heck, it's practically Canada here in Messina. So my gut would have said Messina's closer to the, or Messina's farther away from the, the equator. It's not an answer though. But one of these answers is because we're farther from the equator. And which one is it? No, we get, they get all of the same. They get all of the same radiation. The sun the sun is shining on them and shooting the same things, right? Um, they don't absorb. And this actually asked why Messina's colder. If they absorbed more, or, Messina would be hotter. Okay. And again, they both are going to absorb the same amount. Four. But yeah, four. The fact that they're farther from the equator means the sun hits them at a lower angle. So remember when we had our flashlight, instead of the 90 degree angle, the flashlight and the sun are hitting them at a much lower angle. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? You weren't here for the day we did flashlight? Yeah, you were, you liar. All right. Yeah. She just said she doesn't remember. No, so what we to do, if I think we need a little bit more reviewing, I picked up more work than we're going to do. So I printed up some practice regions questions. 
There, no, I think for today, we're going to try this on our own. And just like I think I said to you yesterday, I know a lot of you aren't studying. I am not crazy. I know you're like, oh, I don't study for tech. And you think it's something cool when you say that. Um, For the record, you're going to have to start. You, you, you should probably be studying. And then I also hear, well, I don't know what to study or how to study. And that I believe. That I get that you don't know how to study. So here's my suggestion to you. Here's question one. Liquid water can store more heat energy than equal amount of any other naturally occurring substance because liquid water. Did uh -huh. we talk anything about water storing or water and energy? No. We didn't. Yeah. Like when we did land versus water when we went on that field imaginary field trip to the pool. Yeah, Why can the water take in all that yeah. heat? So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Go to the land versus water spot in your notes. With the delinquents in the back of the room oh, there, that means Miss Red. What? I'd like to tell on this kid right here to tell y'all. Look at it. Too late, deleted. Go to your recently deleted and delete it from there as well. God, I feel like I'm at home. For me. Well, wait, I don't know what's in there, Miss Red. Okay, all right. When you've done, show me it's delete. Yep, delete. Thank you. No, you are No, I asked you to go to and find where we talked about water heating up. Where did we go and talk about water? Okay, we're getting closer. When we talked about water heating up. Page 15, Carter said. Wow. Yeah. So why does water, why is water able to take in and store all this energy? And making it heat up slow. Oh, you didn't do that, babe. When you're absent, you need to watch the video and get the notes. So why does water heat up and cool down so slowly? It has a higher specific heat, which I know this question didn't ask which one heats up slower or faster. But if it's heating up slow, that means it's taking in and holding on to that energy. And if it's cooling off slow, that's because it's keeping all that energy stored up in it. So the reason water can store energy is because it has that higher specific heat. So guys, the process of going and looking up that answer, that's called studying. Okay? When you look up an answer in your notes, that's studying. Here's what I want you to do. I'm changing your homework. Homework? Yeah, homework. That's the end of the I know, I'm going to add it right now. Zachary, let's see your homework. Is page nine here? And page 153. So that's 12 questions. I want you to tell me what page in your notes you found the answer in. Yep. What yeah, page is for 12 questions? I want you to tell me where in your notes you found that information. 12. No, 12 questions, I said. So we're doing just, oh, okay. just the front page of this packet, which happens to be page nine, and just page 153. And I want you to tell me where you found the answer, whether it's, I, so some of them you're going to find the answer in your reference table. So you can either tell me where in your reference table you found the answer or where in your notes you got the information from. <coughs> okay? Little bit of extra work, but I shortened your homework because of it. I'd rather just have the whole packet. 